Well, let's continue on with dividing fractions. I know you're sick of fractions, but we got to do a few more. This should be over in another couple of hours. We'll be, over. we'll be done. Okay. Refresh our memory. Four ninths divided by two thirds. The first number, you leave it alone. Just write it down here. Four ninths. The second number, the one on the right, you flip it over. Instead of two on the top and three on the bottom, you flip it over. You put the three here, the two here, but you end up multiplying. That's a nice thing. You multiply. Now you could do four times three, get 12. Do nine times two, get 18, and then reduce that down. That's okay. You can do that. What I've stressed before in the previous video is it's really better most of the time to reduce or cancel before you multiply. Meaning any number on the top with any other number on the bottom either in the same fraction or different fraction, if they'll divide by the same number, you can do that. Meaning, now wait, can I divide four and nine by the same number? No. Can I divide three and two by the same number? No, but I can divide four and two by the same number. Let's divide both those by two. So this divided by two is two. This divided by two is one. Can three and nine divide by the same number? Absolutely, positively. By three, it's three, okay. I can count three. Divide that by three, that's one. Divide this by three, that's three. Now that we've done that, you multiply the two top numbers. Two times one is two. Three times one is three. Remember the rule, you always need to make sure it's in lowest terms. Reduce the lowest terms, it's already reduced. Can't reduce any further, that's the final answer. There's one more thing that I have to discuss. We have already mentioned three different kinds of fractions. If the top number is not as big as the bottom, that's a proper fraction. If the top number is bigger or the same as the bottom, that's an improper fraction. If you have a whole number and a fraction, that's a mixed fraction or mixed number. But here's another kind. Ooh, right here, that's a, it's called a complex fraction. Well named, right? This is where, in this case, the numerator is itself a fraction. Denominator is two. Technically, if the numerator or denominator or both are themselves fractions, that's a complex fraction. So, but you treat that just like a division problem. As I said, all fractions, any fraction, every fraction can be thought of as a division problem. Even four and nines can be thought of as four divided by nine. So this is one fourth divided by two fifths. Let's work it out that way. One fourth, the top number, leave it alone. The bottom number, I have to flip it over. Flip this over, now that puts a five up here, the two down here. Now remember, this canceling out, reducing before you multiply, here's a big caution, because I see people doing this wrong all the time. If any number on the top and any other on the bottom can divide by the same number, you can do that. But will one and four divide by the same number? No. Will five and two divide by the same number? No. Will five on the top and four on the bottom divide? No. Will one and two? No. But some people think, well look, four and two, but they're both on the bottom. You can't do that. Do you see what I'm talking about? You better, okay? Those, you can't divide those by the same number because they're both on the bottom. It has to be the top of one and the bottom of some other fraction or the same one. They divide by the same number. So there's nothing I can do here to reduce it. So just work it out. Multiply. One times five is five. Four times two, that's eight. And that's the final answer.